In one of our previous videos, we went through our success stories for Madden 23 in the market, which methods, which, which concepts really helped us make some coins throughout the year. But this video, we're going to go through our failures, our mistakes, and my regrets from the Madden 23 year. You really can learn a lot more from your L's than you can your W's. Now, it's a cliche saying in real life, but for the market, everything that goes on in the past really makes my decisions for the future. So getting right into things, I would say I have three big regrets or failures uh, throughout the year. The first one is more so the launch period of Madden 23. Now, going into the year, I had some ideas. I had some plans for how I wanted to work the, work the market, upgrade my team, and go about things but i found myself and looking back at it i wasted a ton of time in the first few weeks either playing week and league for no rewards playing house rules for minimal rewards or really just the types of ways i was making coins on the auction house was just flat out wrong i really focused on in the background you're gonna see no money spent episode one maybe no money spent episode two something along those lines but i, I put a lot of time into sets uh, that being uh your team builder sets your team affinity sets and a few other sets like that. And in reality, I really just, it was not worth the time spent. I was spending 20 to 25 minutes sniping four or five cards against people while I was streaming. And I was making like five to 10K per card. If I had to go back and do it all over again, I would one, not really focus on house rules, not focus on weekend league at all, but more so focus on head to head seasons. Head to head seasons really, it makes a ton of coins. It's just super, super repetitive. But in the beginning of the year, you have like you it's, it's the honeymoon phase you have more desire to just do the boring stuff and i won't really call head-to-head -head seasons boring but more so i really should have been playing more head-to-head -head seasons last year i played like five seasons in the first two weeks i won three or four super bowls but i didn't really get to that until like the second week the game was out but back on the sets and back on the market and this is something i want to plan going into madden 24 um again not really focusing on sets as much because they just don't they don't make enough coins they never have. They, they weren't something I used at all in Madden 22. I don't know why in Madden 23 for the first few weeks, I was so stubborn to the sense like I need to be doing team builder sets to make coins when it just, the profit was not worth the time. Profit was there. I was making some coins. Just wasn't worth the time spent. I also did invest in some training very early on going to the Campus Hero program. And while it was a little bit of a success, it wasn't like everything I told myself going to the Madden 23 was in Madden 22, I waited probably a month or two to get involved into investing because investing is really only good when you have a certain amount of coins. You got to have a few multi millions for that to be for it to actually be worth it. But me trying to outsmart myself, honestly, I just went straight into investing because it's what I would say made me popular as a YouTuber, Madden 22. So I went full on into investing like a week into the game, going to Campus Heroes, and while I still made coins. It, it wasn't really worth it. I think I put like a 1.52 million coins in training. I made a few hundred K, but I had to wait like a week for, at, for it to actually see the profit. So m my launch, my first two to three weeks in Madden 23 were really, really inefficient. Really, really inefficient. And something I, I would say going to Madden 24, I want to really focus on high overall flipping of cards. Um, it, it was something that we used a lot in the end of Madden 23. And as long as the markets are stable and they're not fluctuating like crazy, every day and I you know I could actually hold a card through the night wake up the next morning and not drop you know 25% I really want to look into high overall flipping and try to make like 5 to 10k minimum per card just for you know buying one card instead of having to buy five or six to do a set in hopes of making that five to 6k after tax so I guess you would say my first big regret was the first two or three weeks of Madden 23 man I I think I played it really really bad and it it didn't you know didn't really changed like drastically my whole entire year but i definitely could have gone could have went around and went through things a lot differently moving on to our second regret failure l throughout the Madden 23 year and i guess you could say this is in chronological order so we're going to go throughout the year um and it was team diamond investing but if i'm being honest it wasn't really our fault now we'll go through the situation but team diamond investing the team diamond promo as a whole was really weird in madden 23 the first launch i mean the second launch i don't even really consider that team diamonds as it was like more team champions 2.0 but team diamonds was supposed to come out i think in late september i do believe and we were investing in the the main investment for team diamond was i think it was middle elite so it was like i was trying to buy 84 
or 83, or no, it was more 84 through 86 to 87 overall core elites. So 84, 85, 86, 87 core elites, because those were the cards that went up the most in Madden 22 for the Team Diamonds release one. But the problem was, and again, this wasn't really our fault, but it was still kind of a mistake in which what I focused on and what I prioritized in that investment was. So Team Diamond was supposed to come out late September, but then like a hurricane happened in Florida, and that's where EA Studios are located. So they then pushed back Team Diamonds like another two to three weeks. And then for some reason during that time frame, players weren't receiving trophy packs for winning Super Bowls or even just like advancing in seasons. Uh, and it all came crashing down when the day before Team Diamonds was slated to actually release. Like it finally it took a few delays. We were all ready for it. They granted all the trophy packs over the past like month and a half that hadn't been granted. They granted them all at once. And well, trophy packs, I think at the time were 84 plus. So pretty much your core elite market from 84 to 88, which was the main market we were invested in. And then that didn't crash, but it just got to a point where like every card was probably 25% cheaper. You know, 86 overall cards that we were buying for 27 to 30k went down into the low 20s. And at that time, I had put all my coins in Team Diamond Investments, which was like 20 mil at the time. And I was looking at a few million coin loss. Now we did, you know, do some things to kind of counteract that. I ended up trying to sell as many cards as I could that were still at a price that I originally bought them at. Took those coins, then tried to buy as many cards as I could that were super, super cheap from that little mini crash the day before. Um, and we still, again, made, I think it was, like, ended up making like two to two and a half mil. But on a 20 mil investment, that's not really that good, especially for a lot of time that I put into that Team Diamond investing. I guess you could say, looking back on it, what could I have done differently? Probably just more focus on the, uh, I would say the guarantees of Team Diamond investing, which is going to be team builders. Team builders are, I think they've been involved in Team Diamond sets forever. Like ever since Team Diamonds were a thing, they're always required the two team builders for the, like the most recent team builders for that set. And because of that, your 80 overall to like 83 overall markets pretty much double in price. And while I was invested in that a little bit, I should probably just go into that more because it's just super, super reliable instead of just banking on EA actually requiring a lot of the higher overall players that we invested in. Like there were some ultimate kickoffs. There were some team of the week cards that were that went up in price a ton, but they were really, really rare. And like you couldn't really invest in them going into the promo because they just were not on the market that much. And we're, whereas core elites are getting listed every second, it's easy to snipe them. So team diamonds, I it, again, it was a, L's we don't really take. It's just more... I would consider a failure of an investment just we're not making what we think we're going to make so we only made you know two mil on a 20 mil investment again we spent like two to three weeks on it so overall wasn't worth it that was our second big mistake at the madden 23 year for the last failure slash regret l for the madden 23 year it is going to be going down during the blitz program program now it wasn't the you know i know probably some of you guys were expecting like oh the selling your team stuff that definitely no that really didn't backfire at all um throughout the entire year i was able to consistently save a lot of coins by selling my team and buying it back at the proper times but blitz was a very up and down situation now again once everything settled down, the dust settled, and we actually got into zero chill following Blitz, my Blitz investments ended up making a ton of coins. But there was mistakes made actually during the Blitz promo, and it had to do with the Blitz. I wouldn't really say they're LTDs, but they were LTDs. They were only able to be, you know, brought to the game for in two situations. So the first one being you had like the offers that they originally came out in over the four waves. Four players, an 89, a 90, a 91, a 92, and I think there was a 93. I'm not sure if there was 93. Maybe it was just 89, 90, 91, 92. And then at the end, I think it was like the fourth day of Blitz, uh, something new in Madden 22 that they didn't do in Madden 22 was that they rebrought all the cars back for like a, a special offer at the very end, and that's what crashed the market. It was very weird Blitz. Uh, because Madden 22, we made a ton off of Blitz, and it was a very like, consistent thing. Um, but Madden 23, how the market went was... It did drop in the very, very beginning, and it was pretty pretty steady throughout like the three or four day weekend. And then the day after Blitz actually ended, the market just crashed. I still don't really know why it did that. There was like a special, I think, AK offer on that Monday, or maybe there was like Team of the Week offer on Tuesday that like brought the market down a little bit. But man, my Blitz cards that I was investing in, if you, I again, I was at this point, 
This was a little bit after Team Diamond, so I had like 30, 35 mil invested entirely. That is something that I do. I think I it's a signature of mine as I go all out on my investments. You will see me go down to literally zero coins when I believe in an investment. Um, and you know, most times we're right. But Blitz, I had bought 30 to 35 million worth of these Blitz cards, and there was really only a few that were the day or two after Blitz ended, were actually looking to be profit. Now, getting back to Madden 22 these cards were almost instantly like the minute they were out of the store offers for blitz for blitz bolts or whatever it was they were instantly profitable it was just a matter of how long do you want to wait before you cash out but these cards like for example Brees hall i had 20 to 25 of them that i bought for an average of probably 200k and you can see on your screen right now he was 155 160 so like i was really panicking i was looking at a five to six million coin loss uh, you know, just a few days after Blitz and a lot of people that were following my content were also in the same situation. We were going to the zero chair like, damn, we really screwed up. Um, and again, I don't really have an explanation for this one. Normally I do and you can learn off your mistakes and there's always a cause and effect with every investment. And it's what makes it, it's what makes investing consistent because you can usually predict the causes, effects, the variable change and all that sort of thing. But man, these cards tanked down in price and it really took a ton of patience and you had to wait pretty much. You had to pretty much hold these cards until Zero Chill came in and they brought back TVPs. They brought in the present offers for these cards to go back in price. And eventually these cards did sell for profit. But man, it was, if you remember this Blitz, like this little two, three day period, pretty much it was like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday following the Blitz weekend. We were in hell. Like, like seriously, I was looking at a multi-million coin loss. I'm like, damn. They got me this time. Like, I, I got a little too greedy. I bought these cards a little bit too early. And, uh, yeah, I was looking at, at a few. So, I guess, looking back on it, I could have probably just waited until the all they were when they were all available for store offers instead of just buying them individually when they were, you know, in the standalone offers. Um, but, again, like, Madden 22, they were so consistently rising in price after. And they were actually doing it. Funny thing is the Part 1 and Part 2 were Day 1, Day 2 Blitz offers. Those cards were actually rising, and I was able to sell a few for profit on, like, the Saturday and Sunday. But the minute all the, uh, the the entire store or the entire Blitz cards became available for offers, all four parts just tanked down in price, and they were, you know, L's until Zero Chill and the training market skyrocketed back up. But I guess that's really all for this video. I wanted to go through, like, you know, some of our failures from Madden 23 and uh, see what we can learn from them. I mean... There was all, I mean, there's also always going to be like little mini failures. I know there's a lot of LTDs. I didn't make a lot of coins off this year, but LTD investing really, really inconsistent. It really came down to like what EA released in the days following you buying an LTD. You would buy a running back and then boom, you know, on Thursday where they released the new best running back in the game, your running back LTD you bought on Tuesday for team of the week would crash in price. Like that's, that's what LTD investing was this year. Just wasn't, wasn't consistent enough to uh, really like put a lot of coins into it. But that's all from this video. I mean, put down in the comments below some mistakes you guys made in the Madden 23 market and what you learned from it going into Madden 24. It's going to be very important. Uh, like if you enjoyed this video. I like doing these retrospective videos on the entire year. Really, uh, yeah, it's just, they're, they're fun to make. Um, yeah, comment if you have any questions, your experiences. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. And until next time, peace.